Okay, so uh, I was thinking about changing this power supply capacitor. It's a two-part capacitor. And these two capacitors, these large ones here, are right in the output of the, uh, of the set. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change these two. There's no indication that these are bad, but I really haven't done a proper test on these two because I haven't had the speakers hooked up blasting away yet. This guy is in a metal can. Chances are he's perfectly fine. He's in a metal can, and uh, this thing has not seen heavy duty. There's no sign of overheating or anything like that. There's really not much reason to be suspicious of this. But these guys are not in metal cans. They're in this cardboard tubes. And a failure of one of these, although they tend not to short, so I understand, they tend to go open, um, if one of these was to short, then the speakers that it's feeding are at risk. Uh, unless a fuse blows or something else blows, something's going to blow. The output transistors are going to blow, speakers are going to blow, something's going to go. So these are a little risky to leave in. Even if they're working properly now, and I don't know that they are, because again, I have not tested it properly. So these are 1500 microfarads at 40 volts, and I've got these two replacements, 1500 microfarads, but at a much higher voltage, 200 volts, and that's just because that's what was available. The higher voltage only makes them that much more reliable or long-lived. I mean, these are going to last 100 years or something stupid like that, so that's... Certainly long enough for me and the person who owns this. I think 100 years is pretty good. But these things are not going to last 100 years, that's for sure. And they're probably already weakening. I don't know, though. So that's what we're going to take out. Those two big guys. Now. Where are they on the circuit board here? Should be pretty easy to spot. There should be pretty large terminals here. Let's see. Okay, so here's one right in here. I'm just using my hands to feel it, and I think that's the other one right there. Right there. So, there. That and that. And like that and that. Which you probably can't see what I'm batting about, but. Okay, so I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna suck away the solder first to get these out. I need to be absolutely sure I'm desoldering the right thing. That's funny, there seems to be like two outer terminals and one in the middle. Why would there be one in the middle? Same thing up here. Three terminals. What's going on there? Three terminals. Hold the fort. Is there something more to these capacitors? Just says 1500 at 40. A one section capacitor with three terminals. How's that work? Uh, I guess when we get them out, we'll get a good look at them. But, uh, there shouldn't be any more than two terminals, so. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. Here, maybe I'll set up the close-up camera. How about that? Since I still have it on the camera dolly, it's easy to aim it here. Bear with me for a moment while I adjust the focus on that. And let's see, we're looking right up at... Right up in here. There, you can see the three. One, two, three terminals. That's a strange thing.
Okay, let's see if I can get it out now. So what I want to do is get it wiggling a bit. I can turn these connections into cold solder joints and then they'll just pull out. Just pull out. What's holding it? Almost out. on there. the only problem. the uh, solder on that too. So what's going on here? This has got... Ah, uh, okay, I see, I see. No complications here. Three outer pins, all of them ground, and then one inside, which is the positive terminal. So three for support, and one is the positive terminal. That's all that is. Good. Okay, mystery solved. Four terminals, not three. Now I can do the other one much better. Interesting how easily I cracked that one terminal by wiggling it. Didn't take an awful lot. I guess if you put something like this into a vibrating environment, I don't know what that would be. Let's say on a train sending it across the country. So it's going from the manufacturer out to the, to the retailer on a train. Clickety clack and all that shaking and pounding. So the larger components in here are going to bounce around a little bit and stress their connections because of their weight and mass. And over the course of a long trip in transit, it doesn't have to be a train, it could be a truck, it could be anything, they may actually suffer cracking failures. It sounds a little far-fetched, but believe me, it's not. There's a uh, story about some power cable being made in Quebec. This would be back in the 1930s or so. 
made in Quebec. Uh, it's a complicated cable. It has a lead, uh, a lead cover on it, a lead sheathing. And I put this cable on a train, sent it out to the west coast. When I got out to the west coast, the cable was ruined because the uh, lead had developed cracks. Just from the train trip. And the vibration. Now, lead is not a stable metal because it's too close to its melting point at, you know, earth temperature. So it doesn't take much, but I guess what solder is? Solder is half lead, so. And then the other part is tin. That's not a particularly strong metal at room temperatures. Okay, I don't think I did too good a job on that one. Let's see if it's loose at all. Well, no, it's not. I'll wiggle it and try to ruin all these connections here. One of them moving. Once one starts moving, the rest will follow. Come on. Okay, so I got that one moving. Good. This guy going. I'm flexing that uh, circuit board a lot. And I don't like that. Okay, got that one moving. Out you come now. There it is. Okay. <laughs> That's a bigger struggle than I expected. Now, the new guys that are going in. Okay, let's take a look on the other camera here. So, now they just have the two pins. There's no special support, so but this thing better not go on a train and, and out to uh, British Columbia because a lot of weight and hardly any mechanical support. On these terminals, um, well, what I'm thinking now is the, the three outer terminals on here are connected together by virtue of the can here on this thing. And I've removed this can. I have only two, two terminals going back in, so it's going to go into one of these three can terminals. The other two terminals, do I need to run a wire and connect them all together to compensate for this thing missing? Anyway, yeah, I look at the circuit traces a little bit, I can figure that out. Now, next question is Is there any chance I can just plunk this guy right in? Because it happens to be in the right dimensions. What are the chances? Wow, looks pretty darn close. The last one is, uh oh, the outer, the outer dimension's a little bit bigger. So if this thing's really tight in here, I'm gonna have trouble. Let's see. Lots of space in there. Okay, let me just focus up again a little bit here. So that's the guy I want to put in.
No, there's no, oh boy, this is not going to be as easy as I thought. So even if I could get the two pins through two of these holes appropriately, um, I don't think this is going to sit in there. for a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know what? I may have to actually bring wires up and connect to this and then place this you know, literally like that and somehow fit it in place. And it doesn't have to be there. It could be anywhere in the radio at that point. Okay, I gotta I gotta ponder my next step here because the, the whole situation has become uh, a little more difficult than I was figuring on. Yeah, I gotta think about this for a little bit. Come up with a plan. I need a plan. I need a plan. Okay, so I I, I think I got an idea here of what I want to do. I'm gonna solder two lead wires off of here. Well, both of these, of course, I got two of these to do. And then, I'm going to, let's see if you can see this on the other camera, I'm going to mount them up against the back wall. This is the back wall here. I'll probably hold them on with a, uh, uh, a tie wrap just above where the original ones were. I run the lead wires down through the holes in here. I make the connection underneath, and then if I feel I need to, I can connect the three CAN terminals together to recreate what was there before, if that's necessary. And I get these up here. That's not too bad, you know? It looks okay. And the other one can fit. I don't know if you can see this on camera or not. I guess you can. It's definitely tight in here, by the way. This one can sit right up in here, like that. Now these capacitors are all insulated everywhere except for the terminal sticking out. So that's going to work. So I'm going to have to drill holes right through the back panel here so I can bring in the uh, the twist tie to hold them. Okay, so what should we do here? Step one, I think solder the extension leads on. I think it's step one. Everything gets a little more complicated, doesn't it? So i got to find a little bit of wire and get ready for doing that.